Chapter 7a Voting Machine Fraud Let's start off with the people who we elected to drive our country straight into the ground. Campaign donations and clandestine actions from pro-New World Order entities aside, we've got a terrible issue we need to address and that is a legitimate factual concern about voting machine fraud. The proponents of the Great Plan have pulled out all the stops to advance their agenda and have left no avenue uncompromised to complete their mission. Think about this. The 50 states in the USA are divided into over 3,000 counties. Ohio, for instance, is divided into 88 counties. Iowa is divided into 99 counties, and so on. In approximately 1% of these counties, there are paper ballots which are hand counted properly, the way all of our counties should be counting our ballots. This respectable 1% consists of about half of the counties in New Hampshire, the live free or die state, and a very few very small counties scattered throughout the rest of the United States. In 99% of the other compromised counties, the Democratic and Republican controlled boards of elections make sure that the ballots are commandeered from the neighborhood precincts as the polls close their doors. This is to make sure that the, gut, that the neighborhood citizens and other watchdog patriots do not have a chance to count or at least spot check their own votes. Such counting or spot checking by the citizens would make centralized computer vote rigging impossible. This is why the Illuminati, who today control both the National Democratic and Republican parties through the CFR, vehemently oppose any such citizen participation at the neighborhood precinct level. This is because centralized counting is the common feature of all governments trying to rig elections. Quote, those who cast the votes decide nothing. Those who count the votes decide everything. Unquote. Joseph Stalin, alleged 33rd degree Freemason, candidly speaking the truth. In these 99% of USA counties, citizens are forced to use either computer or machine methods of casting a ballot. Vote counting is wide open for fraud this way. The Democratic and Republican parties at the county level delegate the counting to one of a small handful of privately owned companies which count 99% of the votes in the, in the United States national elections in complete secret with no independent verification or audit. Currently the four companies which are delegated the power to count the votes in the USA were election systems and software, Diebold, Hart, and Sequoia. The local county election board used armed guards to make sure the citizens, candidates, and reporters cannot see what these private companies are doing to the ballots in the counting room on election night. Since 1973, the powers behind the RNC and the DNC have arm-twisted, persuaded, and bullied the local governments in most counties in the USA to unconstitutionally delegate the vote counting to these four mysterious companies. By 1988, the counting companies had con consolidated their control over 49 states and half of New Hampshire. The private companies controlling the ballots are given a direct feed to a team of manipulators, which represent a pool of the AP wire service and the major TV networks, all under Illuminati control. The vote fraud cartel was further empowered through the implementation of the criminal, quote, Help Americans Vote Act, unquote, of 2002, or the HAVA which should really be called the Helping the New World Order by Computer Fraud Act. HAVA appropriated $4 billion of our money to entice the state and county election offices to implement computer vote counting systems from basically three major companies, Diebold, Sequoia, and Election Systems and Software. These systems provide for no paper trail 
and no citizen checks and balances. Most people have no idea how their vote is counted, and I'm here to tell you as of right now under this system, your vote doesn't count. The patriotic organization Citizens for a Ver Fair Vote Count has estimated that it would take no more than $400 million per election to hand count every vote on every ballot in the United States. Because the New World Order proponents and their mainstream media insist on easily rigged elections, all you hear is how we can't possibly afford the expense of a hand count. Bullshit. We spent hundreds of billions of dollars supporting our world military empire. Billions of dollars were just spent on just the promotion and advertising for the 2012 presidential election alone. Why would billions of dollars be spent for a job that only pays $400,000 a year unless someone else besides the president is going to benefit? You already know the answer to that. We can easily fund an honest and accountable vote counting system by the people for the people to ensure that who we want running the country is who gets the into power. This is the only way we're going to get our foot in the door and get some real change in this country. So, in a nutshell, it's either paper ballots hand counting for an honest election and real change, or computer corrupted centralized computer counting by the proponents of the New World Order and the usual suspects stay in office over and over and over pushing our country further and further underwater. Which would you prefer? Alright, that's the end of that one. Next time we'll be on the Tavistock Institute. Could be, it could be very interesting. Alright, talk to you then. Our conspiracy theorists in Washington, D.C. to say that an Ohio man with White House connections was actually murdered this weekend. New at 6, here's Night's Next News investigator Scott Taylor to tell us if it's true or not. Well, this sounds like a made-up story. One man rigging state elections to help his boss, President George Bush. After it's done, power players in Washington say, get rid of the guy. Do I believe it? No, for now. 45-year-old Michael Connell died Friday night after his plane crashed into this vacant house near Union Township in Stark County. Connell was a political power player in Washington, D.C., and in the White House. He was the vision behind President George Bush's and John McCain's internet sites. Initial reports say bad weather could have played a part in the crash. I guess the plane just flew apart. Some in Washington have a different opinion. The website Velvet Revolution believes someone sabotaged Connell's plane. It appears he was trying to land the plane here. He hit a large flagpole and then he struck the house. Velvet Revolution claims to have been tipped off that Connell's life was in danger. Who was threatening Connell? According to the website, a senior advisor of President Bush, Karl Rove. Some say Connell was about to reveal embarrassing details involving senior members of the Bush administration, including their involvement in destroying incriminating emails and rigging elections. Connell died on impact and was only three miles away from the Akron Canton Airport. He was an experienced pilot. Was it an accident or murder? It's really hard to believe. I, I, I really don't know the full story of it. I just heard what I've seen in the paper and, and on the news. I spoke to Michael's family today in person. They are grieving. A visitation is planned for tonight. Many from his neighborhood say this was a very good man who donated his time to the worldwide community and loved his family very much. Scott Taylor, 19 Action News. Hey guys, SGT here with breaking news. Did ABC TV in Chicago post the Illinois GOP results from the primary 24 hours early? It's now 1.24 a.m. Central Standard Time, and I posted this at 11.30 Central Standard Time at SGT Report, so go there to see the, uh, the full screen shots yourself in person. Um, so here goes. On the eve before the GOP Illinois primary, one must ask, how the heck does SGT report have election results for a Republican primary in Illinois which is yet to even take place? Now we've long argued that the Ron Paul fix is in, but this, it leaves me speechless. 
posted tonight, Monday, March 19th, on the website of the Chicago ABC News affiliate WLS-TV are the following election results, clearly labeled Illinois races, federal offices. Now, if we have this wrong, please do let us know why this information would exist in any form 24 hours before the primary. Or if we are indeed living in a banana republic, copy that. You now have our blessing to move out of this stinking country. Now, the time-stamped screenshot from my computer on Monday, March 19th, 2012 is from 11.29 p.m. Central Standard Time. Okay? And here is what was on WLS-TV's website, the local Chicago ABC News affiliate website. And as you can see, apparently, 24 hours before the primary even occurs, Rick Santorum won with 987,453 votes, 32% of the overall vote. Romney placed second with, 1900, with 919,993 votes. Gingrich a close third. And there's Ron Paul. Poor, abused Ron Paul. No wonder he never wins. With only 95,106 votes, 3% of the total vote given to Ron Paul before the vote has even occurred, before the primary has even occurred. This is such an outrage that obviously uh, what's going to happen is WLS-TV, which has since taken this information down. You can see here, it's now gone. Uh, they took it down um, somewhere uh, approximately about an hour after I took these screenshots. Here's the original screenshot. They also have uh, election results for these other races. But there is the, um, there is the federal offices races that, uh, that they posted. Now, they're going to come out and they're probably going to claim that this was all just a test. But I'm here to tell you something far more sinister is going on here, as we've seen in all of the caucuses and primaries across this country. Ron Paul uh, has standing room only crowds and then somehow loses in these landslides to these other characters that can't drum up 100 or 200 people uh, at, at their um, rallies. So we're living in a banana republic. I wish I had better news for you. I wish this thing was going to end better, but at this point, it seems like the fix is most certainly in. Uh, please spread this far and wide, and thanks for watching. You can see these original uh, screen grabs at sgtreport.com. Thanks, guys.